Good evening, everyone. Um, it's seven o'clock, so we're about to get started. Um, my name is Courtney Harge, and I'm the member advisor here at Fractured Atlas. I'm here to talk to you about crowdfunding and how you can use it to collect donations and build a network of supporters. Before we get started, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. Tonight, we are using caption access to provide attendees with closed captions and video remote American Sign Language Interpretation, or VRI. This is a part of our effort to better serve deaf and hard of hearing artists and the disability community at large. Tonight, our ASL interpreter is Crystal Kramer, an RID certified interpreter, and our captioner is Sarah Falsey. If you have any questions about Fractured Alice's accessibility work, please feel free to contact us after the webinar. Additionally, this webinar is being recorded, so you can revisit it after the webinar ends. I'll have a section for questions at the end, but feel free to chat them as they come up using the chat box. Remember that I may answer your question during the presentation, so you might want to wait until the end to type them all to me. Here is a list of what we're going to go over today. First, we'll introduce crowdfunding, what it is, why we use it, some basics, and so on. Then we'll move on to building your audience, goal setting and budgeting, executing your campaign, and then making space for questions. First, we'll talk a bit about who Fractured Atlas is. Fractured Atlas is a nonprofit technology company that serves artists nationally. We work with artists and arts organizations in all different disciplines and all across the country. We offer a variety of programs and services that help artists strengthen the business side of their practice. Our four core programs are fiscal sponsorship, uh, a program that helps artists raise charitable donations from individuals, corporate sponsorships, and grantors. Our insurance program, which allows our members to apply for commercial policies that cover the risks associated with creating their art through our partnership with their insurance brokers, Locked In Affinity. Artfully, which is a web-based software application that helps artists sell tickets, take donations, and track fans. And SpaceFinder, which is an online marketplace that helps artists find performances and rehearsal space. Through these programs, we work with more than 70,000 members, over 4,200 fiscally sponsored projects. Through that program, we've helped them raise over $152 million, covering a network of over 500,000 artists nationally and internationally. Who am I? Uh, my name is Courtney Harge, um, and like I said, I am the member advisor for Fractured Atlas. Um, that means it's my job to help support our members in using our services to best execute their programs and projects. I am a theater producer and director um, in my own right. I have my own theatrical company, Colloquy Collective. Um, that produces primarily historical works by women of color.
now we'll get onto what is crowdfunding? Crowdfunding is the act of many people contributing money to a product in exchange for a good or service. Simply, it's asking your crowd, the people you know, to give you money in service of the work that you're doing. And they can get goods or services in return. That can get a little complicated when you pair crowdfunding with fiscal sponsorship. So, we're going to explain some more about fiscal sponsorship. Fiscal sponsorship is a tool that is ideal for an individual or group of people who want to fundraise for an artistic project without going through the process of becoming a federally recognized 501c3 tax exempt organization. It's ideal if you are an individual artist trying to seek support for your arts practice, a new or small arts organization that wants a training wheels period before deciding if you want to pursue your own nonprofit status, or a for-profit arts enterprise that wants to seek both investors who plan in the share in the profits of your work and nonprofit donors who want to make a tax deductible donation. The mechanism of fiscal sponsorship is that a donor or institution makes their contribution directly to the 501c3 organization. So in our case, a donor who wanted to support your work would make a credit card donation uh, on our website or write a check payable to Fractured Atlas. We then issue the donor a tax receipt and hold the donation in a fund restricted for your project's use. You then request the funds from us and we disperse them to you in the form of a grant. Basic overview of fiscal sponsorship um, will allow you to better understand how crowdfunding can connect to it. But an even simpler question is, why should you crowdfund? Why is this an option? Why is this something that seems so popular? And why should your resources go into crowdfunding? Some initial highlights are there is a low barrier to entry. By that it means anybody can start crowdfunding. Anybody can activate their network. You can go online, find a crowdfunding site, set up a campaign, and simply present your story to your audience. That lower barrier to entry is one of my favorite things about crowdfunding because it does something that I think is very powerful. which is it democratizes funding. By allowing projects to directly connect with the audiences that can both benefit from their programming and understand the value of their programming without having to involve some type of decision-making board or institution with its own agenda is a very powerful concept. It allows artistic work that may run counter to a dominant narrative or that may be considered controversial or provocative to flourish because you're moving a lot of the gatekeepers. You're allowing the creator of the work to connect directly with the audiences that can either experience the work or that can support the work and empowering those audiences to fund it, to make it happen, to say, you aren't going to stop me from working work that is important to me and this is how I'm going to show it. Crowdfunding also builds momentum. It's a great marketing tool because it gets a bunch of people talking about what you're offering. In some ways, it's like a train that keeps going to your destination. 
if you send out just one link saying you've got a crowdfunding campaign, your audience can look at it and go, what is this? I didn't know they were fundraising. I want to talk about it. I want to engage. I want to come see the work now that I've contributed. It allows you to build fans and followers and lets people have a longer term engagement with you that can be both exciting and riveting. And last, but certainly not least, it rewards your audiences. Particularly if you've been working on projects for a while, or if you've had the opportunity to build an audience that's been there for you and is committed to what you're doing. A crowdfunding campaign is a chance to celebrate them. To say, hey, thanks to you for supporting us this long. Here is our tote bag or our coffee mug or something that you helped make possible. It allows them to be ambassadors for the work where they say, I remember when we were operating in a tiny one room place, and now we're going to do this big grand piece. And they can say they were there then. Allowing your audience to have a stake in what you do and the chance to promote and share how they've been involved can be a very motivating factor. So again, the four main reasons you should crowdfund are low barrier to entry, democratizing funding, building momentum, and rewarding your audience. So how should you fund, crowdfund? Um, today we're really gonna talk about some best practices to plan and execute a successful crowdfunding campaign. What do you think the first step should be? With so many options on the market, of which this is merely a sampling, it's best actually not to focus on platform, at least not yet. There are some best practices that work regardless of platform that can help you prepare for a successful campaign. For me, the best organizing metaphor is a party. I believe if you plan your campaign using the same principles you used to plan a big party, you can set yourself up for success. That means organize your guests, pick your venue, host the party, and say thanks. Organizing your guests in this metaphor means building your audience. You need to start with who you know, who you can activate to support your project. And I think an important distinction in that is the distinction between fans and your target audience. You can use both in different ways to support your work. So a fan is any member of your audience who wants to support you. Your target audience is the group or groups of people that prefer what you're doing. This is important to remember when crafting your audience. You're not looking to reach everyone. You're looking to reach the people who can find value in what you do. Your fans aren't necessarily your target audience. And planning for a crowdfunding campaign is an excellent time to better understand both. Perhaps you have a fan who isn't located in the community where your work is presented, or they don't prefer the type of work you do. For instance, let's say you're from Michigan, but you produce work in LA. While your Michigan friends and family may wanna see you succeed and are fans of you, your work may be created for an LA audience. And so you wouldn't necessarily look to your Michigan fans to pur purchase tickets to experience your work. Your fans can definitely amplify and support what you're doing, but part of an effective crowdfunding campaign is finding your target audience, finding who wants the thing that you offer. It's helpful to think of your audience via these tiers, organized by degree of separation from you. More simply, there's you at the center. 
you and your team, right? And then there is your friends, family, and fans, people who are connected to you, know you, are close to you. And then it's your acquaintances or your friends and families, friends and family. Um, one step away removed from you, know you, but may not be intimately connected to your work. And then there is the crowd, the, the strangers. Um, you have to go through each step to get to the next. The further people are away from you, the more information you'll need to provide them. You'll have to throw more time and resources at each successive audience circle. You should know approximately how many people you and your team can reach in each circle. Part of your crowdfunding strategy may be building your audience before you even start your campaign. This will allow you to better plan and budget and, and achieve your goal. In building your audience, goals should be based on the size of your network. Approximately 30% of your goal will be contributed by family and friends. So knowing your audience is the first step to goal setting and budgeting, which is what we will talk about next. Um, in looking at your audience, they can directly impact how successful you can be on creating a goal and on budgeting. So, like we said, 30% of your goal will be contributed by family and friends. And here are some helpful numbers that will work with that. So, the average donation across any crowdfunding platform is $75. The most common donation across any crowdfunding platform is $20. We found that for those with fiscal sponsorship, the average donation is actually $105. So how do these numbers help you set your goal? Let's say you have a goal of $7,500. Another number, that is helpful to know is that of your network, one in four of the people you ask will donate, right? So for every four people you ask, one of them can give. With those numbers, your goal of $7,500, that means you need 100 donations if the average donation is $75. So you need at least 100. That means your network needs to be 400. And I want to be clear, that's 400 discrete people. I like to say 400 families um, because people who are partnered, people tend to give as a household. Um, so, you know, knowing several families of four doesn't get you to the 400 mark. Um, so you need 400 discrete households. Of your $7,500 goal, family and friends are going to contribute $2,250, or 30% of the total. There's also different types of platforms, which we will talk about, um, that will inform what your goal will be. The type of product you're operating can help you set your goal. So um, a keep what you raise platform allows you to keep whatever was donated to you regardless of whether or not you hit your goal amount. Um, an all or nothing platform means if people people are basically making pledges to your project or to your work um, and they, if you don't make that goal, 
they won't give the money. So it's either all or nothing. All or nothing is helpful if the type of project or work you're doing um, needs a proof of concept or if it has something like uh, what we call a minimum viable product or it, meaning if you're manufacturing something and if you can't make whatever the thing is for less than ten thousand dollars getting eight thousand dollars isn't going to help you because you need this minimum amount to make the item um, however if you're doing something where you can adjust if you don't hit ten thousand dollars it's like but we can still do a pretty good show for eight or you know we can make adjustments for if we get a little less um, that's where a keep what you raise platform can better serve you because you may not hit ten thousand dollars but if you can use every dollar to get you closer to where you need to be keep what you raise can be better It can also feel overwhelming to develop your budget, trying to juggle what your network looks like, what are your ultimate goals, um, and that's why it can be best to start with the audience. This will help you determine how much money or fundraising your network can support. In the same way you wouldn't pick an event venue without knowing approximately how many people need to fit the space, you don't want to start a crowdfunding campaign without knowing who is in your network. Additionally, here are some helpful hints to develop your budget and to understand how to communicate those costs. First, your budget should accurately represent the cost to execute your project in the way you feel it needs to be done. There isn't a right or wrong number. People often say that number feels too high or doesn't that feel a little low to you? Numbers don't have feelings. They simply tell the story of what it costs to do what you want to do. Your total budget is different from your crowdfunding campaign goal. You need to know how your campaign will support your overall project. It's rarely a good idea to rely on crowdfunding for 100% of your costs. Additionally, money is not stuff, and this is a good thing. Frequently people think I need to raise X amount of dollars to be able to buy the space equipment stuff and make my project happen. You don't actually need the money, you need the stuff. This is a great opportunity to think of small businesses you could partner with or ask for non-cash donations from. You may also be able to get discounts for things in exchange for driving business their way or showcasing their product in your work. Remembering that money is simply a tool to get stuff can help you be more aware of the stuff you actually need. Research is your best budgeting tool. You are not expected to know what everything costs to the penny. Your best tool in developing a strong budget is research. Call vendors that sell the products you need and see what their prices and payment policies are. Compare prices through internet searches to get an accurate sense of the range of costs. Avoid accounting for the cheapest version of something in your budget. That deal may disappear, never to be seen again. So now that you've built your audience and are setting goals and properly budgeting, we can get into the nitty gritty of executing your campaign. The first thing we can talk about is timing. Crowdfunding 
is a short-term campaign. Ideally, 30 to 45 days. You don't want um, a long three or four month campaign because it is tiring to run um, and your audience can get fatigued. Um, as I spoke about before, building momentum is one of the key benefits of crowdfunding. And you don't want to have to try to sustain that momentum for too long. You want energy, you want people going and to continue the party metaphor, you don't want a party that lasts days. People get tired, people, the, the energy wanes. Ideally, you also want to launch on a Monday or Tuesday to gain momentum during the week. Um, that allows people who are at a computer, doing work, the chance to immediately act on the asks you're presenting. Campaigns are generally U-shaped in their activity. That means there's lots of energy in the first and last portions of the campaign with a big dip in energy in the middle. Be sure you're scheduling your campaign during a time when you can be fully engaged with those peak points. If you need a break, the slowest moment should be in the middle, so plan accordingly. You should avoid major holidays and weekends. People are more likely to contribute when they are at their computers generally during a work week. By, since crowdfunding campaigns, excuse me, take place exclusively online, they really are about building online momentum. You want to prioritize the times that people are engaged on the internet, online, can respond to an email and act in the moment. If there are times like holiday weekends, regular weekends, just holidays in general, where people aren't as engaged with their computers, you will have less activity. Which leads to specifically avoiding January and August. Post holiday, um, there's so much end of year giving. Um, people in January have kind of donor fatigue just everywhere. People are not quite ready to give um, just because there has been so much giving happening. There's generally when people are um, kind of spending the least. Uh, so January is not a great time to run a campaign. The same is true for August. Just because people are trying to get their last minute vacations in, they're trying to um, avoid work before Labor Day, they want to kind of enjoy that last little bit of summer and so are less likely to spend or engage and are more likely to be um, away from their computers and away from uh, unavailable to respond to your crowdfunding campaign. So what's your story? You know, we're, we've talked about when you should run a campaign, um, but what are you telling the people who are working with you or who you want to experience your work? We at Fractured Atlas like this simple three-part formula um, to really talk about your campaign. Something simple. The first question is, what do you do? Um, and this is a great time to be as literal and specific as possible. You know, I'm a theater artist who focuses on the stories of women of color. Or uh, I'm a modern dance performer and this is our new evening length work. The more clarity you can have with what you do, the more people can connect to it and see if it is in their wheelhouse. This is how you can connect with your target audience. Second is, who do you do it for? This is a great way to invite people 
who you think may not know who you are or may not um, be connected to you into your space. You say, you know, we are doing this work for students in our neighborhood, or we are doing it for the communities that we live in, or we're doing it for anybody who wants to connect to our art form. Um, the more specific and clear and passionate you can be about who your audience is, the better. And then lastly, what's your true north? What is it that you are trying to arrive at? What are you striving to take us to? This is like, what is the big concept behind why you're doing the work? Why is this work important to do right now? That's where you can really talk about your vision. And it's where audiences and people who want to work with you can connect to the passion of your work. So the next element is your pitch video. Kickstarter specifically has found that 50% of campaigns with a video reach their goal, while campaigns without videos only have a 30% chance of being funded. It's gotten to the point where videos are required, but they don't have to be super produced film quality videos. There are some basic elements that can have a successful pitch video for your crowdfunding campaign. The first is keep it personal. This is people give to people. You and your team should be in the video. There should be a person making a pitch. Um, you should also keep it short. You're looking between one to three minutes. Of those one to three minutes, the first 30 seconds are crucial. That's where you are going to draw somebody in. So it's important to, you know, if not start with the 20 seconds of a blank screen or, you know, 15 seconds of silence. Um, you want your first 30 seconds to really draw people in to, to make sure that they are connected to your pitch to make sure they hear your story. You should also showcase the work. If you are making a theater piece, see if you can show snippets of, of your actors rehearsing. If you're making a visual artwork, can you show some of the, the works in progress? Let people get a chance to see some of the behind the scenes work that goes into making the art that you wanna fund. Crowdfunding is really an invitation for people to support and experience your work in its development process. So use um, the pitch video as a chance to showcase what you're doing. And lastly, ask for money. Crowdfunding is about the financial transaction of people supporting your work. People will support you. They're often ready to say, oh yeah, I totally support. Um, but that does not translate to donations unless you ask for the donations. Um, so in your pitch video, say your donations, your funds, your money will help us make this project happen. The more specific and clear you can be in that sense, the more likely you are to be successful. You've made a pitch video, which we all know, and now it's about rewards. How do you determine what to give people in exchange for their gifts? Um, and that is a great opportunity for you to engage with your creativity these are some of the areas that people give. Um, first, it's access. So behind the scenes footage or, you know, signed props or um, special videos that show a rehearsal or that show something 
that uh, allow the audience to see what the process is. People like to have access to the magic um, of creating the work, um, particularly if there are people who appreciate art but don't feel that they can create it. They want to know what the process looks like. They want to peek behind the curtain. You can also give actual products. This is where the tote bag or the coffee mug or the t-shirt um, can help promote your work um, and can give people a piece of the experience. Um, be mindful uh, for any of your rewards about costs and um, shipping um, because you don't want to make something that's so difficult for you to manufacture or, manufacture or for you to ship that it becomes an additional burden um, in trying to connect with your donors. It could also be experiences. Can they come see your work? Is there an invited dress they can get to? Is there an open studio only for donors they can experience? Um, are there ways in which you can share your experience with them? Um, sometimes people offer, you know, classes or coaching or things that are of value based on the skills of the team involved to support the donors, so that the donors have, have an experience, have access um, that they otherwise may not get. And lastly, for rewards, it's anything. Whatever you think will create a connection between you and the donor is um, a great idea. If you know you are fiscally sponsored by Fractured Atlas and have questions about whether or not a product or more experience will work, feel free to reach out to talk about what your crowdfunding rewards could be. We're happy to to help or let you know how other people may have solved some of these problems. So now, and only now is the time to consider platform. We've talked about so many other things, and now it's how do you, where do you put your crowdfunding campaign? Um, I'm going to talk about a few of the most common and popular platforms and highlight one or two differences that can make each stand out based on what your needs may be. So the first is Kickstarter. It's, it was one of the first and it is one of the biggest uh, still. Kickstarter is an all or nothing platform. So like I said earlier, if you don't make your goal, you don't get any of the funds. This is ideal if you're looking to launch a product. Um, so if you need to see if there's a market for it, a a product launch um, will help will be helped by Kickstarter because you can see if the audience will sustain it. Um, this is also great for proof of concept. Um, if you're looking to say, I think I have a really good idea, will you be able to support it? Um, Kickstarter will let you know. Um, if if you have an audience, if it finds an audience, they will support and fund it. Um, but if not, then it may be that you need to strengthen the concept, and it's a great way to test. We at Fractured Atlas have launched our own own crowdfunding platform called Fundraising by Fractured Atlas. Um, it is a keep what you raise platform, particularly because it's built to serve artistic projects. So we know that most artistic projects have some flexibility in their schedule, um, in their funding, excuse me. They, if you don't make your goal, you can still make something with the funds you, you raise. And we want our artists to have the flexibility to do that. Um, it's also connected to the fiscal sponsorship, which means that your donors are eligible to receive a tax deduction for the donations they make through um, our fundraising platform. Next is Patreon. So Patreon is a subscription model. Um, they're ideal for long-term engagement. So 
not the best if you have one show or one exhibit that you're trying to fund. Um, but if you, let's say, are a writer who publishes new content every month or an illustrator who is consistently um, publishing content, uh, Patreon uh, can, you know, set you up with monthly supporters who are subscribing to your work and are expecting content on a rolling basis. It's, it really is ideal for content generators, people who are creating um, short-term content that um, turns over fairly quickly. So things like YouTube um, artists or uh, um, people who write short form content. Um, any of that is uh, ideal for our Patreon. Um, and the last example is Seed and Spark. Seed and Spark is also a Keep What You Raise platform. Um, it's ideal for film media distribution. So if you are making a film, doing web series, uh, podcasts, that type of content, um, it is connected to distributors. Um, and it also has a, a new feature and it has direct purchase donations. So if you need particular types of equipment, you can put that equipment on Seed and Spark and people can donate by buying that equipment directly for you. Um, the crowdfunding landscape as a whole is vast. There are a lot of different platforms. Um, and so it's worth it to shop and see what you need, what works best for you. and that's why I say do your planning before you pick a platform because you need to know what you need uh, to know what the platform can give it to you. Last are some myths about crowdfunding that I would love to dispel. Um, the first is angel donors. In general, people don't go to crowdfunding platforms and search and try to find something to like throw $10,000 at. Um, people give to campaigns for people they know or they are connected to um, and that have strong pitches. So as much as you want to, um, you want, you know, somebody to just come by and like throw all of their money at it. In general, you will know about 85% of your donors. Um, if you don't know them, you are connected to somebody who's directly connected to them. Um, so making a pitch for the people you know and expanding that circle is the strongest uh, crowdfunding strategy. The other myth is uh, set it and forget it. Um, a lot of people tend to think that if I put this campaign out and I let it sit for 60 days, the money will just show up at the end. Um, a crowdfunding campaign is work. You should be connecting with new people every day. You should be talking about it or promoting it every day. It's why they can be kind of exhausting because each day you have to pitch and connect and tell your story. Um, the more engaged and active you are, uh, the more likely you can be successful. The next myth is diamonds for donors. You don't have to give away everything for donors to engage in your work. Um, what you are presenting, what you make is valuable. And so start at knowing that your art, your content is great and people want to give because they believe in that art, not because they need to buy another coffee mug or need to buy a rare framed photo. Um, if they wanted to make purchases, they would go make purchases. They are giving to you because they believe in you. And so don't offer huge rewards that can be expensive for you to make and difficult for you to distribute. Um, keep it simple and let people connect with the value of what you're offering uh, inherently. And lastly, uh, huge goals don't equal huge donations. Um, the amount you are able to raise is directly connected to the strength of your network. So setting a $100,000 goal um, doesn't mean that people will then just be encouraged to give $20,000 at a time. 
um, you need to cultivate relationships for very large donors. And crowdfunding is ideally for small to mid-range donors um, to give as a crowd, um, to give um, en masse. And the more realistic and planned and supported your goal, the more likely you are to be successful. Lastly, in our party metaphor, we've organized your guests, we've picked your venue, you've hosted the party, you say thanks. Once you have gotten people to connect to your work and use the momentum to get your donations and have given them their rewards, say thank you. Thank you for being our community. Thank you for the work you've done. Thank you for saying that you want us to continue doing what we do that creates um, a relationship. It allows you to continue to ask again in the future, and it makes your network stronger and more viable in support of your work. With that, I would like to thank you all for giving us your time this evening. That is, the, that is our content, um, and we're going to open it up for questions at this point. Feel free to type them in the chat box. Um, and you can always, after this webinar, if you've been thinking about some things and want some new information, reach out to us at support at fracturedatlas.org or give us a call at 888-692-7878. Um, so without any further ado, feel free to put um, your questions in the chat box. Okay, I'm seeing some questions. Uh, the first is, um, could we go over timing a little further? Um, I would, can we have a little bit more clarity about what you're looking for in uh, talking about timing? If you can expand on that question, I will definitely answer it. I'm gonna move on to the next one and then come back to the timing question just so I can know more specifically what we're looking for. Um, the next question is, how has fundraising by Fractured Atlas been received? Um, it, it's all of our projects who wish to use a crowdfunding platform and uh, are fiscally sponsored are required to use Fractured Atlas. This allows us to um, be in control of where the how the funds are processed while also um, allowing us to offer the tax deduction to your donors. Um, our projects have, have really liked it. Again, a uh, platform is definitely about the people hosting on crowdfunding. So uh, our projects have really enjoyed being able to have a uh, crowdfunding platform that's connected to their fiscal sponsorship where all their donors are in the same place. Um, and we've had a lot of uh, successful campaigns. Um, the next question is, where on the Fracture Atlas website is the info about fundraising? Um, you can find more information on uh, fundraising.fracturedatlas.org. Um, we also have information in our knowledge base, um, which is available on our standard website, fracturedatlas.org, under the help section. Um, that can show you, uh, that can answer any of your questions um, and show you how to use the platform. Um, this other question is, does growing your network on social media platforms tend to be successful with regard to crowdfunding campaigns? Um, in other words, are digital connections that are directly engaged with your brand as successful as connections with people you know in person? Okay. Um, Crowdfunding is ideally a digital party. It, is a, it exists in the digital space. So the stronger your online presence is, the more successful you can be in crowdfunding. That is true regardless of whether or not they are connected to you as a person or as a brand. Um, 
because people give for different reasons. This is um, a great way to think about the distinction between fans and your target audience. So your fans, people who are connected to you as a person, um, are, are just more likely to have a, a, a connection to what you're doing um, based on who you are. Like it, you know, there are people, I was like to say family as an example. There are people who will support me just because I'm me and because they care about me. Um, brand loyalty or brand um, connection is very much determined on or dependent on, excuse me, what the brand offers the person. So if your crowdfunding campaign is for something that is connected to your brand, then people who have strong connections to that brand will respond positively to the campaign. Um, if they are more connect, if your crowdfunding campaign is more connected to you as a person, um, you, your brand growth may not reflect as well in the success of the campaign. Um, but having a strong social media network of some sort, a social media, media support system, um, will greatly uh, impact and positively impact the um, success of your campaign. Um, Oh, so the timing question is, are there, are we aware of specific times of day that work well for calls to action? Um, that's a good question. In general, Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, either 9 a.m. or between 1 and 3 are the best time for email and online uh, marketing. Um, it's when people are staring at their computers in general um, and so are more likely to respond and have the resources to do so. But you may find that your audience behaves a little differently. This is where if you are tech savvy, having an understanding of analytics or understanding of, of how your audience is behaving can be helpful. Um, Another question is, what are the best ways to promote your crowdfunding besides social media and email marketing? Um, I want to reiterate, crowdfunding is best in the online space. So you should be able to promote it on social media or email. Um, however, whatever way you make connections um, is a way to promote your campaign. So, you know, there were some people who had, you know, tiny postcards that said, this is our work and here is our crowdfunding campaign. There are phone calls that you can make, um, just connecting with people who may be interested in your work, who can you call and have conversations with. Um, there might be handwritten letters based on your network. It's however you can connect to people. It, you can also do in-person pitches, like if you're having a, a party for your project, you know, maybe have a crowdfunding launch party where people can give in the space. Um, you want to do things um, that remind people of the engagement and also send them to the online space that is crowdfunding. Um, are there fees for Fractured Atlas's crowdfunding site beyond the standard fiscal sponsorship fees? Uh, there are not. So the standard 7% uh, fee, that is the fee to be fiscally sponsored, um, is the same fee that uh, applies to crowdfunding. Are there any further questions? Oh, I'm sorry. There is an additional question, okay. Um, Am I understanding correctly that all Fractured Atlas projects are required to use fundraising by Fractured Atlas? Fine with that, but wanted to clarify. Um, so yes and no. If you would like to offer the tax deduction to your donors, Fractured Atlas has to process those donations, which means that you have to use fundraising by Fractured Atlas. If you wish to use another platform, you're welcome to. 
those funds would not go through to Fractured Atlas and you would not be able to offer the tax deduction to your donors. It just depends on what your choices are. Um, but yes, that's the, those are the options. All right, um, that seems to be the last question. Again, thank you all for your time. Thank you so much to uh, Caption Access for providing uh, ASL support and uh, closed captioning. It's greatly appreciated. Um, you can always email us uh, at support at fracturedatlas.org if you have additional questions um, after the webinar. We also um, have several other webinars in our series, so uh, feel free to sign up for these. Um, and we also have um, past recordings of previous webinars available. Um, thank you all again for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Crystal and Sarah. It's also appreciated. Um, and I hope you enjoy um, your evening. Oh, I apologize. There's one more question. <laughs> Sorry, before, before we run. Um, can you run a crowdfunding campaign on a platform like Kickstarter, uh, but route some donations through Fractured Atlas if someone prefers? You could do that. Um, however, that works against both goals. Um, you know, if you're running a Kickstarter, you need all of your donations to go through Kickstarter to hit that goal. Because if you don't hit your goal, you don't get any of the funds, right? Um, and if you're going through Fractured Atlas, you wouldn't want to run a, a crowdfunding campaign on Fractured Atlas while you're also running a Kickstarter. Uh, that's, that's like throwing two parties at the same time. You're splitting your audience. Um, so, it, you would have to be very intentional about why you would want to split people in that way um, and make sure that your network is strong enough to not get confused um, and mistakenly like you gave in the wrong space or um, not kind of divide their funds so that you don't make the goals and, and get the resources that you need. Alrighty, I think that is actually the last question. Um, enjoy your evenings, everyone. Thank you all so much for um, joining us. And uh, I hope to see you again at our next webinar soon.